Less than a month ago, a plea deal for Hunter Biden fell apart. Since then, his top criminal defense attorney has left his legal team. And now we're learning more about what was happening behind the scenes. For more on this, senior investigative correspondent Catherine Harridge joins us now from Washington. Now, Catherine, what have you learned through your own reporting? Well, Omar and Amory, good to be with you. What we've learned through our reporting here at CBS News is that for some time, those close to the whistleblowers have maintained privately that their decision to come forward in the late spring really was a pivotal point in the investigation for then U.S. Attorney David Weiss in terms of a charging decision for the president's son. And what we now see through the reporting and these records that have been reviewed by other media outlets is that it was, in fact, the testimony of these whistleblowers coming forward that really did change the calculus. Uh, they believe that if they had not come forward, there may have been no charges for the president's son. And one of the whistleblowers, Gary Shapley, issued a statement to CBS News that reads, in part, this is exactly the sort of preferential treatment these IRS agents blew the whistle on to begin with and highlights why someone independent needs to be appointed special counsel rather than David Weiss. And as you both recall, David Weiss was just named special counsel by the attorney general uh, about a week ago, and that was done at his request, which now gives him broader powers to bring charges in any jurisdiction of his choosing. So people may recall, Catherine, mm -hmm. that the reason this plea deal sort of collapsed, which was for him to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax mm -hmm. charges and uh, averting a gun charge by enrolling in a diversion program, mm -hmm. is because when they were supposed to agree on this deal, there seemed to be a little confusion as to whether or not it would also grant the president's son immunity and how vast that immunity mm -hmm. would be. So could the president's son now be facing more serious charges? Well, with the collapse of the plea agreement, it is pot uh, potentially possible that he could face more severe charges in this case. Uh, and this is backed up by records that have been presented by the whistleblowers to the House Ways and Means Committee. This here is called Exhibit 2. This was a report that was put together by the IRS case agent. And there was agreement among the investigators and the prosecutors to proceed. And this document recommends charges for something called Section 7201, as well as 7206 and 7203, and that's the willful failure to file tax, as well as the attempt to evade or defeat tax, which is a felony, as well as fraud and false statements. Mm -hmm. So the collapse of the deal potentially opens the door to more serious charges. Um, secondly, when you look at the second half of this plea that collapsed, it's the diversion agreement for the gun charge. I go back to the transcript in court that day with Judge Mary Ellen Norica, and she said to the government prosecutors, I've had people in my court before who were drug users and then possessed a gun and made a false statement, which is also the case with Hunter Biden, and they were charged with a false statement. Now, that's a felony. That can be three to five years, just as a minimum. And the prosecutors really said, well, we, we don't feel uncomfortable with that, but it was clear that the judge felt that it was not consistent with the kind of sentencing and prosecution that she had had before her in the past. And let me ask you this, Catherine. It, you, you've looked through court documents. Is there evidence that there could be other crimes that they're still possibly looking for, not just what, what you're reporting on, but could there be more? When you go through the transcript of that plea hearing, uh, at one point it seemed very clear to me, I was inside that courtroom, that Hunter Biden's lawyers were trying to salvage this deal. And in an effort to salvage the deal, they allowed the judge to walk through the misdemeanor tax agreement line by line with Hunter Biden answering questions. And he answered a number of questions. I think you could argue that he was stipulating to elements of potential fear of violations. That's the Foreign Agents Registration Act. So his working with the Chinese energy firm, for example, as well as the Ukraine energy firm. And then there were also questions about felony tax. He filed past tax years in 2019 at a point where he was sober, yet there were still wrongful deductions, according to the IRS agents, on those forms. So if you just go back to the transcript, you can make the argument that he stipulated to other potential charges in the future. All right, Catherine, thank you so much. Lots to explain there. We appreciate it.